Okay, so it is Saturday morning and uh, I put on makeup and clothes so that I can talk to you guys, which I think alone deserves a thumbs up, don't you think? <laughs> okay, and right now I'm like bracing my phone against a window so it doesn't shake. You can see my finger there, I think. Uh, I just ordered a like selfie tripod thing, so I'm hoping that that will help me in the future. Um, Kind of make videos that aren't so shaky but so far oops, some guys looking at me from across the way hey dude it is a gloomy day and honestly i slept really poorly so it's a perfect day to just hide in my room <laughs> and so so you're gonna see the whole chaos behind what i'm doing i have i have three things that i am planning to sew this week so number one is the french poetry pleiades dress this is the first indie pattern that i've bought i Maybe since I moved to Spain, maybe, maybe since I moved to Spain, um, mostly because I just haven't been set up to print out patterns and put them together and all that kind of thing. So this one I printed out, I put together the other day and I actually really enjoyed putting it together. I, I was able to like sit at my table and just do it like that. And so I think I'm going to print out some more of patterns that I either already have or maybe something new. Anyway, um, printed that out, cut it, and um, I'll show you in a second what I cut it out of. And then next I have, oh, from the Berta Easy magazine that I showed you guys last time, I'm going to do that coat that's on the cover. So I have some pink coating from Minerva that I've been meaning to use, and I've been told that January and February is the coldest time of year in Spain. Right now it's getting down to about six degrees overnight and 14 or 15 during the day. So obviously when it's warm, but I find when you're in the sun, it's really warm and you can be outside and I mean, some people are on the beach for goodness sake, but I could walk around kind of just in a long sleeve t-shirt or a sweatshirt. Um, but when you're in the, the shade, it's quite cold. So I think I'm definitely going to benefit from having a nice wraparound coat. And then the last thing I'm making is from the new Berta, uh, actually no, it's from the January Berta 2020. And I'm doing a funnel neck sweatshirt. And I haven't decided yet if I'm just gonna make the sweatshirt as is or if I'm going to lengthen it to a dress. I had already kind of planned to make it a dress or at least, sort of a long tunic length that you can wear with tights or leggings, that kind of thing. Um, haven't decided yet, but I'm gonna do that. So let me show you what I'm making and how far I've gotten. Okay, so first we have the Pleiades and I'm doing the Pleiades out of this pretty, it's reading a little more blue in this light, but it's kind of a, a dark teal. And yes, I should have, um, I didn't realize this was a little bit wrinkly because it was on the on the underside but um so i've cut that and i think i'll probably start sewing this one today because it's all cut i just need to buy the zipper and then over here i have this beautiful pink coating that i've shown you before and i'm going to use that to make the bird it easy coat now i've done something that i said i would never do and i've cut it out um, from from the tissue and the reason why i did that is a couple reasons number one a coat is very forgiving and chances are if I pick around the right size, it's gonna be fine, I'll make it work. Um, and number two, these pattern pieces are so enormous that I would have had to sew together probably five or six, um, five or six pieces of uh, parchment in order to trace it because I'm having trouble finding big enough parchment. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this version with the belt, but I'm tempted to do it longer because I have enough fabric, but we'll kind of see when I, when I lay it all out. And then lastly, I have this Berta, the funnel neck top, which I traced out, which was exhausting and not enjoyable, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and I've got this navy blue sweatshirting, or sudadera, as they call it in Spanish. And same thing, I don't. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do it long or if I'm gonna keep it short, so we will see. So those are the current plans. Um, so I've traced all of them, I've cut one, I'm gonna cut the other two now, and I think I'm probably gonna start on the French poetry one, um, but I'm going to start it on my new machine, so I'm gonna show that to you now. And here she is, the Elna Experience 450. Yes, I went back to Elna and this is their entry level um, electronic machine. So you can see there, it has the needle down function, it has the reverse function, it has um, 
the start stop function. These are all things that I really missed having a mechanical machine. So that's her, that's my machine. Um, why did I get a new sewing machine? The loner sewing machine that I had was perfectly, is still here, I have to return it. It's perfectly functional, but I wasn't enjoying sewing on it. And if you're not gonna enjoy it, then you're not gonna sew. And I wasn't sewing, you guys know, I, I really wasn't producing much in the fall because every time I sat down, I didn't feel confident that I could get what I wanted. And so I would just kind of put it off and I didn't want to um, attempt things that were challenging, which is one of my goals this year is to attempt some more challenging patterns. And I, and for the longest time I was like, I'm not gonna buy another machine. And then my whole family was like, mom, just get yourself a machine. <laughs> and my husband as well. And then on Instagram, there was a giveaway for this machine um, from a Spanish company. And I went and I looked at it and I was like, oh wait, that's not as expensive as I thought it was at all. It was actually a hundred euros off, more than a hundred euros off. So this was 350 euros, which is, I guess about 500 Canadian, but you have to think taxes in. Um, and it was next day delivery for free. And so I ordered it on the 23rd and it showed up on Christmas Eve. I couldn't believe it. So I figured if I pay 350, I resell it when I leave probably for 250. And actually the last um, sort of reason why I ended up going for it is I have a friend here who loves to sew and she wants to upgrade her machine. And she said, well, I'll definitely buy it off you for 250 when you leave. So I'm not gonna hold her to it or anything like that, but I feel like from what I've seen online in the resale market of sewing machines, I haven't really seen any kind of mid-level electronic machines. It's mostly either very cheap um, mechanical machines or professional machines. So I have a feeling that I'm gonna have an easy time selling this when I go. And if I spend 100 euros on, you know, being able to sew better and enjoy more, then I think it's worth it. Anyway, I don't need to justify, um, but I had been talking about it for a while, so I wanted to let you know. And I have to say, I love this machine. The only thing it doesn't have that I like is it doesn't have the built-in scissors. I love that built-in scissor button. It doesn't have that, but the, you need to go up two levels to get the built-in scissors, basically to my Elna, to my Lotus at home. Um, and I didn't think that was worth it. So instead, I got this one and it has pretty much all the functions I like. And because it's an Elna, I know it, right? Like I just, I instinctively kind of know how to make it do what I want it to do and it feels very familiar. And that's, that's really, really nice. Okay, so I definitely have more of this navy sweatshirting than I thought. So I'm definitely gonna do a dress length and then I can probably even get another pair of sweatshirts pants or something like that out of it, jacket pants. Okay, so I have set out the fabric on my cutting table and what I've done is I've added the top part and then I have taken my Durango dress that I like, that I hacked, and I've turned it inside out and I've pinned it and now I've just laid it on top and basically I've matched the sh shoulder seams-ish and this will just give me the shape to cut to make a dress. And I've used this method several times. As a matter of fact, that's how I made this one, is I used my Sew Over It Molly dress for that. So I realized that I have a ton of this fabric, a lot more than I thought. So it's definitely worth giving the dress a try and if it doesn't work, no harm done. Okay, cut. Pleiades top, done the other day. This is the funnel neck sweatshirt dress. And this is the coat. Isn't this coating so pretty? So done. Don't mind telling you that was a lot of work and my back is sore. Okay, I am back. I went out and had a nice quick lunch with my family at one of our favorite restaurants and had some tapas and a vermouth, which is a drink here. It's like a, I think it's like a fortified wine that you have with like a cola and then it has a slice of lemon and an olive in it. I'll put in a picture if I think of it. And um, I just tried one for the first time just after New Year's and it's quite delicious and very light, just a very light drink, not uh, kind of perfect for lunch actually. Um, so then I also, went to the sewing shop, the Merceria, and I picked up an invisible zipper that is long enough for my dress. It's not the perfect color, but I have very limited options here in town, and uh, I don't really care. I mean, really all you're seeing, if you do it right, all you're seeing is the little 
hangy thing at the top and the pull and that's under my hair so I'm not too worried and then I also got this which if you see here this is the coating and this I'm going to use to wrap the seams and do Hong Kong seams on um, on the inside of the coat so this will kind of show and I thought it was kind of a nice contrast um, and I'll make the inside of the coat pretty so I'm gonna do a little sewing now. I think I'm actually gonna start with the sweatshirt dress because it's easy. <laughs> and I also might do, um, I might add interfacing to things that need interfacing on the other two projects. So here I go. Good Sunday morning, here we are again. Um, I did get some sewing done this morning, but it was super early and dark and I didn't feel like taking off my PJs and putting on real clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and putting on makeup to um, to record. So now I'm here, it's about 10.30 and it is brightening up out. So that's really nice. Um, and I'll show you what I'm working on. Okay, so here is the Berta funnel neck top. And I have done the top portion and attached the sleeves. And now I'm working on doing the side seams. Now, full disclosure, I've kind of guessed at how this goes together. I mean, really, how many ways can it go together? So, um, and I can tell that it's gonna be pretty big. So we'll have to see how I feel when I have it on. And I also, right now, the sleeves are kind of, not trumpet, but just sort of kind of flat, straight sleeves. And um, depending, I might end up gathering those, but we shall see. So right now, I'm being a girl, good girl and I am pressing. Okay, first try on, and as expected, it's enormous. <laughs> now, if you look at the picture, it does have a lot of ease. It's very boxy. So, I'm just trying to decide, but I might take in this under seam a little bit. Honestly, even the drop shoulders are too dropped for me. So I think I might, cut this off and take the drop shoulder up like half an inch even just there like this is halfway down my arm i think even a drop shoulder here would help i mean it's actually not all that big here but it's too drop shoulder for me all right here i go okay so I took up, I don't know if you'll be able to see because it's black, it's so hard to photograph black. So I took up the arm by about half an inch. Oh, it's so hard to record black. Um, I took it up by about half an inch and I think that makes the difference. To me, that feels now more like a drop shoulder. I mean, I could almost do it again, but I think I'll leave it. And I'm starting to come to, oh, <laughs> pins sharp. I'm starting to come to the conclusion that the design, okay, that's it, I'm moving this pin, it's just stuck me twice. That the design having it be a sweatshirt was for a reason, because the top is so oversized that if it's too long, it just looks, yeah. So I've, <laughs> third time, kidding myself with this pin. I've marked about where I want to hit just on my hips I'm also going to compare that with the pattern. And then I think I'm just going to finish the sleeves as they say, and then decide later if I want to bell them. And then I need to finish this neckline as well. But I think, yeah, it's just going to be an interesting black sweatshirt rather than a dress. Hi guys, okay, so it is probably a week later after I last saw you and I completely lost steam on, on my sewing. We actually had a tropical storm here, tropical storm Gloria, and they don't have tropical storms very often here. It's been a long time. This actually caused quite a lot of damage. We were fine, but our neighborhoods kind of bordering us um, had a lot of damage, unfortunately. So it was just a kind of crazy week. And we also had to go into Barcelona and get some paperwork done, which was kind of stressful. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I am back and it is Saturday morning and we have a date night tonight. And so 
it's my goal to get at least one of these two pieces done. So I got a selfie stick, so I, I'm like on this selfie tri tripod, so hopefully I can show you more and it will be nicer to look at and not shaky. So far it's pretty good. Um, I have worked on this, this navy sweatshirt, and I did cut it off and I added a band at the bottom kind of similar to a toaster. I know I can't get away from that style, but it just makes me happy. So I do really like this funnel neck, and what I wanna do is I pinned it where I want it, and I need to go get some navy thread, and uh, I wanna stitch in the ditch. I wanna stitch in the ditch along here so that it will stay put, and I also wanna to top stitch down um, here. So later today, it's raining again, um, we had a nice break from the rain yesterday and it was beautiful. It was 17 degrees and sunny and I wasn't even wearing a jacket and then today it's raining again. So I'm not complaining. It's not three feet of snow. I am not complaining. Okay, so I have my fusible interfacing and that's the part that's been um, getting me stuck is I haven't done the fusible interfacing that I need to do, which is why I haven't just sat down and done a stitch or a, a seam here or there because I need to do my interfacing and I don't particularly enjoy doing interfacing. So that is my plan. So I've got sitting in front of me my coat and my, um, my French poetry Pleiades dress. And I'm gonna see from there which one I complete for tonight. I mean, hey, if I really get in a groove, I might complete both. We'll see. <laughs> All right, I'll check back in with you in a sec. all interfaced. Yay! See, all it takes is for me to commit to doing it for you guys, and then all of a sudden it gets done when it hasn't gotten done for a whole week. Um, okay, so I've, I've interfaced the pieces for both the dress and the, um, the coat, as well as these back here that are drying, or cooling, I should say, not drying. So now I just have to decide which one I want to start working on first, and I've got to clear some space. I, if you remember, I have this to use for my bias binding. So what I might do next is create my bias binding for the Hong Kong finish seams that I'm going to do on the coat. So I think I'll do that next. Done. Full disclosure, it's in two pieces, not one. So clearly I did something wrong, but it doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm not lining a quilt. I'm just uh, lining some seams. So it should work. Excellent. Tea break. So I've decided to prioritize the jacket because I'm not positive it's gonna be warm enough that I could wear the dress tonight anyway. So I'm gonna prioritize the coat, and if I get through the coat, I will start on the dress. But first tea. Oh, and I made my mug. Isn't it pretty? Yay. I made it in um, my pottery class that I take. And I wanted a, an, an enormous mug because I drink a lot of broth, and I like to drink it from a mug, not from a bowl. And so I made this enormous mug. Isn't it pretty? Yay. Okay, it is now one thirty in the afternoon and I have been doing some construction on the coat. Coats are heavy, man. They're <laughs> They're heavy, like just manipulating the fabric is really, really heavy. Um, I've been using the video that comes with Berta Easy for this pattern, and I think I mentioned that before. It's in French, but really you're just watching what they're doing. I wasn't really listening to what they were saying um, because I don't really know French sewing terms, so mostly I was just watching. Um, but I decided to do the uh, Hong Kong seams or the Hong Kong finish probably just for a few seams because I don't think I have enough bias binding. So right now I'm doing it around the inside of the lining. So it has a shawl collar and the shawl collar comes to the inside and so there's like a lining all the way down around. So you can see here, like this is the front of the coat and then this is the inside where that lining folds in. So I'm going to use it here because I figured that will be where it's most noticeable anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna try and show you a little more here what I'm doing. So like I said, I've tacked this, not tacked, I've sewn this at about a half an inch, I think, uh, all the way around. Yeah, half an inch. 
And so, and that's to the right side. And then I'm folding it back and just smoothing it, not ironing it until it's done actually. And then on the back, I'm just folding it over so that it covers the stitch line and that it's flat. And then taking a pin and putting it right in the ditch so that it's covered, I'm really folding it nicely, making it smooth. And then, yeah. So I'm gonna keep doing that all the way down to the bottom. I'm almost there now. And then I'm going to, ta to um, stitch in the ditch on the right side, all the way around, and that should give me a really pretty finish. So I've, I'm stitching along the ditch here to finish off this seam. And now I have turned in the, this is the collar, the lapel, and I've just slightly rolled it in so that when you're looking at it from the outside, you won't see the seam, and just rolled it in. And then I'm pressing it with some steam, not a lot, and then just leaving it so that it kind of has time. And you can see here how pretty that edge is. And the other side, you're not even going to see. So this is like very clean. Good morning. It is Sunday morning about nine. And as you can see, this is not a finished coat that I did not wear to dinner last night. <laughs> but it's hanging up and it's looking good. I did do the side seams yesterday. And I do really love this extra detail that I've put on the inside, even though it's not going to fit um, I'm not going to be able to do all the seams with it. I think that it's ex in exactly the right place to have a little detail. So I'm going to finish this today. I have had a little issue with the hem. I miscut something, so I'm going to have to fudge the hem a little bit. But uh, other than that, I think it's going to be good. Okay, so now I'm going to um, zigzag the edges of all of these because um, there's there are no enclosed seams left and so I really want to make sure that it doesn't fray because this is fairly fray fabric so I'm gonna do that to the sleeves and the pockets and then I'm going to attach the sleeves to the coat uh oh I don't have enough I don't have enough thread <laughs> so I don't have enough thread and it's Sunday. So none of the mercerias are open in Sitges on Sunday, so I can't get more thread. <laughs> uh, so I guess I decide if I want to use gray or if I wanna just wait. Oh, arg. Okay, pouting over. <laughs> I've put my gray thread back on my machine and I'm gonna finish the edges in the gray because it's the inside of a sleeve. Nobody's gonna see it. And then I'm gonna put the pink back on and finish the construction, which is pretty much, it's very close to being done. Um, and then I'm gonna do the finishing work by hand. And I haven't even decided if I want to put the pockets. Oh, but I still have to do the belt too. No, I'm going to be patient. I'm going to be patient and I'm going to wait till tomorrow because this is not going to get me far. <laughs> okay, so final decision, be an adult and have some patience. <laughs> I have put aside my coat as much as I would love to wear it today. Um, and it's gonna be 17 degrees all week, so I probably won't get to wear it much anyhow. Um, and I'm starting on my French Poetry Pleiades dress. I've been looking forward to making this for a long time, and the fabric that I'm using is from um, one of the fabric shops in Barcelona that I like to visit. So I'm starting off by, I've added the interfacing, and I'm starting off by doing a couple lines of gathering stitches on the skirt and bodice, and then I can start doing a little construction. Okay, so <clears throat> I have gathered 
and attached the front to the front skirt, front bodice to front skirt. And now I'm doing the back bodice to back skirt. And uh, I'm using a new stitch on my machine, a new to me stitch that is an overlock stitch because I don't have my overlocker here and uh, I quite like it. So I'm gonna keep going. Oops. So yeah, so so far so good. I'm clearly not worrying about pattern matching on a small print like this, um, but so far it's actually quite a delightful sew. I'm enjoying it very much. So I'm gonna do the second, oh no, I've done the second back. Okay, so I've done both backs. I'm gonna serge the back of this seam here and start pressing. And then the next thing I believe is to insert this uh, neck facing. So I'll start on the neck facing. Okay. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Had to change. It's being on the third floor and the sun beats in in the morning. Um, I'm listening to a nice concert that I think is um, in the square four or five blocks over. I don't know if you can hear it. Anyway, I think that's a concert going on. So I finished now all four panels. So front and back. And they're attached now at the shoulder seams. So let's see, where's the front? This is the front. So there's a nice gather here and a gather here. And then this is the back. And I've done both of those. And now I'm going to attach the neck facing. Okay, so I thought I would do a try on before I put on the sleeves to make sure that it's not too tight here or else I have to adjust the side seams first. I actually thought it would be lower cut but maybe there's a lower cut one and I just did the higher cut one. Anyway, this is, uh, this is much more wearable anyway. I'm tempted to keep it sleeveless. Oops, sorry. I'm tempted to keep it sleeveless. Um, but I'll put the sleeves on and then I can always change my mind. And it's, it's short-ish. I don't know if you can see. It's short-ish. It's like um, definitely above the knee, but because I'd heard that it was a short pattern, I actually purposely made it a little bit longer. I don't wear this kind of um, empire waist often because it makes me feel pregnant. <laughs> it makes me feel like I'm wearing maternity wear, but it's very cute. It's very cute and I love the little gathers. I'm curious to see how I feel about the sleeves, but so far so good. Okay, last update and then I'm going to upload this so you guys can get part one of this saga. So I've put on one sleeve and it's doing something a little funky right here. At first I thought maybe I'd put the wrong sleeve on, but I don't think so, because you want more room at the back of the sleeve, right? So I think it's just a little bit puckery here. So I'm going to just unpick, and actually on purpose, <laughs> this is so weird, on purpose, I used a slightly longer stitch length, like I used a three, a three instead of a 2.6 or whatever, because I was sort of thinking I might need to have a second go at this. Um, so I'm just going to take out like from here to here or from there, yeah, to there and just smooth out these gathers a little more. But other than that, and I, and I mean, it's definitely a snug arm. So I might, just a tiny bit, like not when I look at it, but when I'm moving, just a little bit, just a little bit. I think if I were doing this in like a double gauze, I would probably cut the same size, but reduce the seam allowance from a, from a centimeter and a half to a centimeter, because I find it's just that little bit too tight. I don't know. I might, I might unpick it and do it a little more. We'll see. I can always do that. I actually purposely as well did not, um, did not finish the seam as one. I pressed it open and zigzagged on the sides. So it's, it'll be easy enough for me to take it out. And actually I always have a thing with arms. I hate things that are too tight, but other than that, other than that, cute zipper, mostly invisible. Anything that you guys are gonna see, it's totally invisible. Like I said, I thought this had a deeper neckline. So I'm gonna look back at the pattern and maybe there was a different bodice that I didn't cut. 
Um, cause I would like to make this again in a different fabric and I probably would drop the neckline next time, but this is perfectly comfortable and I can wear it anywhere. Whereas obviously with a deeper neckline, I couldn't. Okay. I'm going to sign off here and I will talk to you guys soon and you will get to see the end of this and the end of the goat. Bye-bye.